Fishing Henry's Fork of the Snake River is to fish within the second of the three Yellowstone eruptions. When viewed from above, you can still make out the walls of the caldera created by the volcano hundreds of thousands of years prior to the third eruption that today forms Yellowstone National Park. On the morning of day two, I decided to start fishing west of the Route 20 Osborne Bridge, casting into the riffles to imitate emerging caddisflies, and then fish my way upriver. I'm right now down by this little set of riffles and the uh, Drew 20 bridge. Beautiful flowers. Uh, I'm gonna try this. There's a billion caddis like in all these trees that are just everywhere. So I thought I'd tie on a little caddis and let's just see because you know some of them are out there you know dropping eggs and things like that. So I thought I'd tie on a little CDC caddis and we'll just see what happens. Thought I had a bite, but no. So I'll try it right here, then I'll go down just where it's a little flatter. using a bamboo rod that uh, Fred Kretschmann made for me. It's uh, based on a Payne 102 taper and uh, with a hollow butt section. It's really quite nice casting rod. Doing very well with this new, uh, I think it's a Rio five weight line. I've included a link in the description below for folks interested in Fred Kretschmann's handmade uh, bamboo fly rods. I'm not getting any action on this. The water is really cloudy. You can't see, you know, to save your life right now. The fly's floating very nicely. I'll try one right here near shore. Sometimes the fish like to hang out near the... There's a nice little drift though, huh? I've got a long five weight leader on here because sometimes these fish get pretty big. Nothing happening. All right. I'm going to try it down just a little bit further and then I'll start to march upstream. Boy, this CDC feather stuff, it doesn't even look wet. Nice stuff. Okay, so we're going to try a few casts with this... Uh, Little CD, CDC feather caddis fly right here down by the bridge. Looks like someone's been standing here before. <laughs> the grass is all matted down. Ooh, little thing tried to take it. I still see him. Well, Goes to show you that there's fish here. <laughs> that was a little fish. This place is all native, they don't stock. So that could have been a little small rainbow, looked like about five inches. 
maybe three. Yeah, about five. I think he came up to look at it. <laughs> now let's try it further out. What I love about these CDC feathers is that when you go to do a little mend, it, it sort of puts it under the water, but then it pops it back out. Like, just like, you know, you'd think a bug would going through some riffles or something. Hmm, maybe, oh, there it is. Getting a great drift with it. It's going right along with the suds, which is what you want. And it's around noontime, so the fish may be a little, uh, a little shy. Guys in the boat over there are nymphing. Well, I'm going to head back up. I'm going to try a few on the shore here. But uh, other, than, other than a little investigation from a small fish, because <laughs> I don't even know what type it was, uh, haven't really had any luck here. So just the wrong time of day, probably. Oh, got him. What, what, what is he? <laughs> Shiner. Whoops, there he goes. <laughs> oh, yeah, so that's my first fish at uh, Henry's Fork of the Snake. It was a little greenback looking shiner. <laughs> so now I can say that I wasn't fishless, technically. <laughs> Get this fly in. Boy, the wind is really take, picking them off now. So I can fool a shiner. That's good. Not only is the water muddy, it's also running high. Something I had taken note of the night before. With time to explore prior to the evening hatch, I decided to check out other sections of the river, starting with its source. And while the primary source of water for Henry's Fork is the big spring, and the water here is as clear as clear can get, the water that flows down through Box Canyon and the railroad ranch, where I've been fishing, is controlled by the Island Park Dam and, and a smaller dam on the Buffalo River. So I headed over to the uh, Box Canyon to, uh, to check it out. Ooh, there goes one.
I'll be disappointed if you can't see these trout. You can see some rises out there. From my vantage point above the river, it looked like it was running pretty high. There was no way I was going to head down there. And that's when I overheard three guys um, who looked like they knew what they were doing. They looked like guides that were off duty or something. They were coming up the trail from the canyon and they were all lamenting over the fishing conditions. As I suspected, a day or two before my arrival, the floodgates at the Island Park Dam had been cranked wide open, going from 850 cubic feet per second, which is normal for the month of June, to now over 1,250 cubic feet. Not great for fishing, but understandable considering the need for water serving the farms and the ranches downriver. You know, the people whose livelihood is affected by you know, the unusual high temperatures and the early snow runoff that the uh, area has uh, been experiencing this past spring. So that said, I came here to fish the railroad ranch. And while the water is running high and muddy, the mayflies are hatching. The fish will adjust to the flows and are rising. So my plan is to get there in the early evening and uh, target some of those uh, trophy rainbows. I tied up, I don't know if you can see this, I tied up this little brown drake that's, you know, passed away, whatever they call it, a spent. But I put on something called Wally Wings, which is a little bit of a feather that you, uh, that you strip the um, quill. But I'm dying to see if this will work, right? Because this is something that, uh, you know, I don't think these fish have seen anything like this. You're not going to be able to buy something like this in a store. That's not an easy thing to do. In fact, I wasn't planning on making it a spent, <laughs> and it ended up that way. So, so I, uh, I'm going to try a few casts, see if I see um, some trout rising to these little spents, and we'll um, kind of go from there. So we've got some weather coming in. Uh, someone said there might be thunder showers tonight. I was also wondering if you could actually hear the cows cattle. Of course the wind picks up. So, so there's the fly. You can sort of see it in the water. And one of the things I noticed earlier is that it has a tendency to sort of spin itself and to spin the line a little bit. So there's almost like a natural movement when it hits the water. Now I haven't casted it yet to, to create that effect. Let's see if I can actually show that by just doing it really lightly. So basically what it tries to do is imitate a fly, a big one that has didn't make it or has laid its eggs and died. So it becomes like what the, you know, easy pickings <laughs> for the trout. So the big ones, you know, they'll, they'll sip it because the trout don't want to go to a lot, of, a lot of energy to try to catch a fly that's about to emerge and take off, only to have the fly leave the water before they have a chance to actually bite at it. So I'm not casting this out too far. See, that just made a few little marks in the water there. You can sort of see it's already starting to spin a little bit. Let's want to lift it up. Ooh, some little thing took a bite at it. See, very effective. You can still see it too. I mean, I mean, I can see it. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but I mean, if, the, if, if a fish were suddenly to just go, go bang, you would see that. You can definitely take advantage of the wind and the casting, huh? <laughs> can you hear those cows? <laughs> Having fun, they're out there raising a little dust storm. <laughs> well, at least the temperature is broken. I mean, it was, it was like 86 today. That was terrible. 
So we got a weather front coming in. You can tell it's just getting much cooler. Well, I, I was just, you know, just cast in line, just getting a little feel for it, waiting for the hatch or anything that's going to be coming off. And uh, I, I had a fish almost went for it, and it was a big one, and it was way out there. So I got to uh, put some line in out, out there. There we go. Get some more out. So there's some big fish hanging around out there. And they liked my little Wally Wing Brown Drake spent. <laughs> I'm about to do a video on how to tie those. <laughs> well, how's that for my last night here in Idaho? Get a little double rainbow forming. Gosh, it almost looks like three. Not to say that the place wasn't pretty without that. <laughs> Man, who? I never. Who would have ever known that cows can make that kind of sound? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Looks like it's turning into a perfect night. And I've seen a couple of rises, not really anything consistent yet. And I've seen a few uh, of the brown drakes. There's a rise way out there. There's a rise right around here. Or no, there was a brown drake emerged right around there too. It's a big fly. I've tied on a... Um, Nice big brown drake. I get a little motion movement. And hopefully it'll pop right back up and you can see it. Straight out there. Current's moving pretty fast. I think it might be time to get into the water. Well, can you see all the seagulls flying around here? We've got these big brown drakes that are starting to rise. You can see them right in the water. Some of these sea there's going, it's going right up in the air. Look at it. There it goes. Oh, and it got away. Seagulls didn't see that one. <laughs> but I'm seeing I'm starting to see some big rises around here too. Just trying to position myself so that the uh, when I cast my fly, it's going to kind of like feed down on the current. Although there was a big fish that just kept rising over here constantly. It's like, oh, I wish I was a little more upstream of that one. But I'm trying to get myself sort of almost in the the path of some of these um, drakes as they drift down. I can cast and drift. Okay, so I'm where I want to be. Now I just got to find a really nice target. Look at the big flies. It's huge. There's a whole stream of them coming right down here, if you can see that. It's 
So it's going to be a waiting game to see where that rise is going to be coming from that I can target. Look at all these seagulls. You know, that's the one danger too, is the last thing you want to do is catch a seagull. I was wondering if you could actually see the husks of these um, brown drakes just floating, floating down the water. See the, that's what they shed just before they take off and they fly. Look at them all. Okay, so I'm uh, sort of targeting a trout that's feeding. Seems like when the sunlight came back out, they started not feeding as regularly, but it, my rod is sort of pointing right at them, right over there. Maybe another, if you, well, there's another one, just rose. <laughs> but I'm uh, really sort of focusing on something here, but the problem that you have too is, is that they also are moving around a little bit. So it's difficult to say like, you know, One was right there. While young trout will approach flies aggressively and make a big splash, large trout will rise and just sip the fly in, showing its tail as it leaves the surface. This is the fish you want to target. And my fly is sitting right now, just like these naturals, which Good, because sometimes it just gets onto the side, but when they drift out a little bit. See now it's now it's lying on its side a little too much. And bring it back in, dry it. It's a very <laughs> patient game here. <laughs> it's frustrating as all hell. I keep seeing that fish rise over there, but that's just too far upstream. And by the time if I, you know, if I were to walk over there, oh, that's a big rise. If I were to uh, walk over there, it, it, it would stop rising, right? Watch for the more aggressive rise from a smaller fish, literally jumping out of the water. That fish is really nailing stuff right now. I'm gonna get some line out. That's how I want the fly to sit. So you know, you really spend a lot of time drying it. After waiting for what seemed like forever, I uh, I finally, you know, not having seen any more rises from that one large fish decided to, you know, give it a couple of more casts and drift the fly over there, but uh, it never rose again. Well, at least somebody finally caught one. And watch this guy have to play this fish. Finally. <laughs> Look at the fight that this trout is putting up.
That fish is pulling him all over the place. I don't think he, I don't think he has a net. He's gonna have to help. Well, I said my good nights. I just talked to the guys out there, and uh, it was like a 24-inch uh, rainbow. <laughs> nice fish. <laughs> but I'm tired. It's starting to get cold. <sighs> it can be really frustrating, too. You know, you think you have the right fly on, and they're ignoring it, and you try another one, and then you don't like that fly. And Oh, boy, and they've got so much, so many... <sighs> naturals just floating all around you to choose from it's really tough so good congratulations to that guy out there <coughs> please subscribe and join me in my journey as i head out tomorrow morning for jackson hall wyoming and the grand tetons to fish the snake river for cutthroat trout